So hallelujah, everyone who is watching this broadcast, especially Global Revival Church members, especially Gen Z, may God's grace be upon you today. We're going to talk about a very topic that you might like, which is about rewards and receiving the crown of glory. So through the Bible, we're going to talk about reward and crown. What kind of reward do you look forward to before God? In the life that you lead before God, so through God's judgment, you know, your results, He's going to give you the reward. But all of God's rewards and crowns, so let's be able to grab hold of it. So I bless you guys. Thank you. So when he was in elementary school, when they did a track meet, you know, he ran pretty well. And it was when he was in elementary school, so it wasn't about 100 meters, but probably around 60 meters. But at the end, when you cross the finish line, you know, the finish, when you pass through the tape, the finished tape, how does it feel when you are first place? So, but at that time, if, there, if you were first place, you would stand behind the first place flag, second place flag, third place flag, according to your ranking. So when you rank first and you stand behind that flag, you know, you go up to the podium and receive the reward. So that, that feeling was very good that he was very exciting so people in the Bible it says the Bible has the same talks about re race what kind of race so when you're born and until you go back to heaven what kind of life did you live so the life that you live is called called a race and you know that life there's probably different issues you know you might go off the wrong road you might you might go there's people who are first place there's people who barely cross the line but in the bible the reward that he wants to give to us so since we were born until we go back to father god what kind of life did we lead what was our goal so there's a lot of Bible verses that talk about rewards, goal, race, and then Jesus also lived his life according to it. So let's study about that today. So 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24 to 27. Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may obtain it. And everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a perishable crown, but we for an imperishable crown. Therefore I run thus not with uncertainty, thus I fight not as one who beats the air. But I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself should become disqualified. Okay. So it's talking about the race, you know, running in a race in the Roman times. It's similar to like the Olympics or that kind of races. So Paul's talking about that. So everyone runs. But how many people receive the prize? It's only one person. But all people want to receive that prize. So your life, the life that you lead, you might say walking is you running, or someone says that they're running very fast is running. So based on your standard, your definition of running is different. But based on you're born and you die, that race, you know, you have to pass, all of us have to pass through that process. But there's a problem. What is the problem? What is the purpose for your why you're running? What prize are you aiming for? Are you running to get a perishable crown, a perishable reward that rots away, or an imperishable one which doesn't rot? So let's say you get chosen for a lotto. lotto. Is a lotto imperishable or perishable? Is it going to stay there forever or it's going to rot away? There's no one that gets a lotto and uses it past three years. So it's a perishable crown. So if you run, you're, when you have to have a clear goal, clear purpose, but what the problem is, are you aiming for a perishable crown or imperishable crown? And then third of all, is your direction clear or not? Certain or uncertain? Do you have a goal or are you, are you certain or uncertain? 
So your life's goal has to be certain. Has to, are you running in one direction, focusing in one place? Or without a goal, you do this, you do that, you go back this way, back and forth, back and forth. You go to Buddhism, Christianity, Confucianism, you go back to the world or you go into the cult. Are you living your life like that? So, based on how, what kind of life you lead according to the Bible? This is the same as everyone running their own race. So running a race means at the end, there is a prize that God has promised for you. So let's say it again. So the reward that you want, this goal that you want, is it perishable that rots away, it doesn't stay forever, or imperishable, doesn't rot and it stays eternal, eternally? And in the life you lead, do you have a certain goal or an uncertain goal? You don't have a direction. You do this, you wander, you're wandering. So there was a famous professor named Yi Young. So his wife, his wife was from a Christian family, but she proclaimed, I'm not a Christian. So they made like some kind of culture museum. But then there was a famous writer. There was a Monami ball pen that was uh, a famous writer that I used to use. She kept saying, don't use it, don't use it. She treated it as a very precious item because a famous writer used it. What do you think about that? Is that pen a perishable or imperishable? So that Monami ball pen, it was just a good pen that writes very well. But Kim Dong, someone, a famous writer who used it, you know, she treated it very precious because she ran a museum. But in your final life, when your race ends, do, when, do you think that pen is worth anything or not? Or is it going to be treated as trash when the end comes? But her goal, with her, with her mouth, she said, I'm a non-believer. But her parents were believers in Korea. But she kept saying she was a non-believer, and what she treated as very precious was that one pen. Do you understand? So perishable versus imperishable, and the uncertainty versus certainty. So this is what the Bible is talking to us about. So if you have a clear goal, clear purpose, so in order to not be disqualified at the end, Paul said he disciplined himself every day and brought it into subjection. So your life too, an imperishable crown, and you have to have, if you have a certain goal that gives you God's promised prize, in order to fulfill and reach that, you're going to train, you're going to you know, discipline your body. So that's how the Bible says. So let's move further. How, what did Jesus do? So let's go to Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. From verse 1 to 2. Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. So here to says, there's a lot of cloud of witnesses that is going to lead us. You know, he's, they're going to teach us to go the right way in the right direction, but in our life, there's things that we can easily fall into temptation. So Jesus was a model, the author and finisher of our faith. So we have to look into him and we have to run with endurance the race that is set before us. And then they talk about Jesus. What was Jesus' goal? It says here, what was Jesus' goal? Purpose? What was his goal for being born into this world? Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame. 
So when he did something, his goal was to have some kind of joy, but in order to do that, the process that he had to endure was to endure with the cross, and the cross brings shame. Cross, the cross was something that gave you hardship and shame but what was the goal his goal is when he did this there was going to be for some kind of joy so he passed through all of that cross he uh, bared his cross he overcame and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God so what is this joy that he talks about so let's go to Isaiah 53 Isaiah 53 From verse 10 to 11. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief. When you make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the labor of his soul and be satisfied by his knowledge. My righteous servant shall justify many, for he shall bear the iniquities. So when Jesus was before Jesus was born into this world, you know, when the Father, Son, Spirit, you know, the Son said, I would go. I will go to this world and show the model and to those who are sinning and I'll fulfill what the Father wants. So the Spirit said, okay, I will follow you so that this work can be completed, so that the Father can be manifested and shown before those who sin. So then he came down to this world. So on behalf of us, he had to die for our sins. So then he saw the result of that that he will prosper and he had the hope so that we could take it by faith so that his soul and his body and everything in that joy all his good works the satisfaction of feeling all everything he did so when he bore his cross in order to save all of these people who sinned so his goal when he did to go fulfill his goal so the result of it he was satisfied and he rejoiced you know, take on behalf of us dying on the cross for our sins. So Jesus, before he was born and then when he was born and until he died, he had a clear, certain goal to get the imperishable crown. The Im Im for the imperishable eternal crown, that's what he was going for. So what did Paul do? So Philippians chapter 3, verse 12 to 14. Not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. So Paul's talking about the goal of the prize of the upward call. But what does he say? He said, I've, if he said, if I already thought that I've already attained it, I've already perfected it, then he wouldn't have the next goal. So there's many people who are successful from early time, early, earlier, but because they said, I already finished it, I'm done, then you don't know what kind of results going to come later. So Paul said, I'm not going to say that I've already attained it or already perfected it, but I press on that I may hold, you know, keep moving forward. So if you think about what you did well in the past, you're going to be arrogant, so then you're going to get judged. So everything he did well and then he, you know, he overcame, he's going to forget about it and keep moving forward. So he said, the one thing I do, forget, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. So to press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. So for that goal, that's what he decided to run for. Do you understand? So what Paul decided, is it perishable or imperishable? It's imperishable. It doesn't rot. It 
In order to get that imperishable crown, he's choosing the. He denies himself daily. He kill, he puts to death himself easily. So what his goal? His goal was certain. Because it's the he's living according to the calling that we receive. So he was called to be the Gentiles' apostle. So that's why he worked around them. But the, his people, he was felt pity for them. So he always started at the synagogue for the Jewish. He brought the Gentiles and did together with the Jewish. But what he was always criticized was his own people criticized him all the time. But the Paul. Paul didn't move backwards or change the calling that Jesus gave him because he didn't like it. He never did that. He just kept continuously looked at the goal of the prize for the calling that God has given him. He kept moving forward. So then think about yourself. What is the goal for why you were born? If you still don't have a direction to go in, then right now you have to quickly grab hold of that purpose and goal. Because your life, as soon as it matches and aligns, God is He's gonna God is gonna decide if He's gonna give you a reward or judgment. So it's very important on what kind of life did you live. So from now on, we're gonna talk about three three kinds of crowns that he's going to give us as the reward three kinds of crown so before when they when you won the olympic like competition you know they gave you like a wreath or like belief for your head but these days they give you a medal or like that so when god gives you some kind of crown he says i'm going to give you the crown so there's three kinds of crown that he's going to give to you so the first one the first recorded crown is so what he what was very interesting when he was reading this the first kind of crown is the crown of life so james chapter 1 from verse 12 to 15 blessed is the man who endures temptation for when he has been approved he will receive the crown of life which the lord has promised to those who love him let no one say when he is tempted i am te oh. so isn't it interesting those who endure temptation are blessed those who endure and overcome temptation are blessed. So who goes into temptation? Those who have their own desires, they fall into temptation. And in that, you know, desire births sin, and that desire gives birth to sin, and sin gives birth to death. So, it's, so if you overcome temptation and pass through it, you overcame temptation, so it's not death. So that's why you have the crown of life. So what is the crown that you can receive the most? You can receive the crown of life. So when you accepted Jesus, the first crown that you can receive is the crown of life. Because as you were living in this world, there was many temptations. There was many things that tempted you, that many things that made you lose hope. But as Jesus said, as he said in Hebrews 12, if you look towards God, if you look towards, you know, think about how he called you and you, when you look towards him, then you can overcome temptation. And if you overcome temptation, then he's going to give you a blessing reward. And that, what is that reward? It's the crown of life. The crown of life. Do you, is it easy to understand? So if you lose to your, if you fall for temptation, it's death. But if you overcome temptation, it's life. That's why you get the crown of life. So just like, even if you get the crown of life, like Paul, even though you attained it, even though it's perfected, you know, forget about those things. But to keep moving forward for the goal of the prize that he, for our calling. So we have to keep moving forward. Don't be focused on one thing. So we can easily overcome and endure. So the first crown is the crown of life. So if there's a sign of life, who cannot come? If there's life around you, death cannot come near you. Did you do today's meditation? So the one who overcame the darkness, the one who destroyed Satan. So if you're wearing the crown of life, then do you think the devil can come to that area or no? He cannot come. Okay. So I hope you guys keep wearing the crown of life, then in all areas of your life, all the darkness cannot come to you. So, you know, darkness brings sin, is sin, but then... 
But in Christ Jesus, the one who gives us victory all the time with God's power is with us. So we must diligently keep doing the good works. So that's what it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. So if the crown of life comes, then God wants to give you more rewards and more things are waiting for you. So the second crown, 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 6 to 8. 2 Timothy 4, 6 to 8, For I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Finally there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day, and not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearing. So 2 Timothy is the last book that Paul wrote. So right before he died, so his calling, his life's calling, he knows that it was almost at an end. So he wrote the letter to Timothy and it's written. For I am already being poured out as a drink offering. That means I already squeezed out everything and gave out, gave everything in my life to him. So, he already gave everything to God. So, what is the time? And the time of my departure is at hand to go close to him, to go near to him. So, when you look back at his life, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I didn't run away from the fight. I fought the good fight. And I have finished the race. And in order to finish the race, I have kept the faith. I kept living in faith. So then finally, what did God give him? The crown of righteousness. So when you live your life according to God's calling, and you keep continuously having relationship with Him, and you fight according to His way, and then you keep moving forward, then what's the reward He gives you? It's the crown of righteousness. You know, the crown of relationship. So the crown of righteousness is probably more valuable than the crown of life. So the crown of life is when you're tempted because of your weakness, your desire, you're tempted, you're almost, you almost died, but you came back to life. That's why you overcame. So that's why you have the crown of life. But the crown of righteousness is you destroyed the enemy. You fought the good fight and you gave your whole life to him. And when you kept living together with him according to his way, the reward he's going to give you is the crown of righteousness, okay? So seek first his kingdom and his righteousness to give you what? To give you the crown of righteousness, okay? So the in order to give you the crown of righteousness in your life, he wants you to work according to his will. So Jesus Christ, our Lord, because he's the righteous judge, he knows how we lived. And when he manifests himself to us, because we are righteous, we can boldly go before him. Okay. So the crown of righteousness. So in your relationship with God, don't miss anything and keep holding on to it. So the third crown is in First Peter chapter 5, verse 1 to 4. So it's talking about Peter. Peter failed in many aspects, areas, so in his life, he's thinking it was a little bit different. So that's why in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 1 to 4, The elders who are among you, I exhort, I, I who am a fellow elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that will be revealed. Shepherd the flock of God which is among you, serving as overseers, not by compulsion, but willingly, not for dishonest gain, but eagerly. Nor as being lords over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. And when the ch chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that does not fade away. So Peter made a lot of mistakes, but what, even the perspective he's looking at, you know, he sees that a lot. So God told him to become a shepherd, you know, protect them, keep them, teach them. So don't do it, you know, unwillingly and not to be a lord over them or try to, you know, control them just because you have that authority. Don't do it to show off, but always being an example 
and do it with a willing and eager heart and serve them. Then, after all these hardships, when Jesus comes, He's going to say, you did very good, very well, and He's going to give you the crown of glory. So what will be the proof of this? So when you serve others, and in their life, Jesus manifested, through the fruits that they bear, the crown of glory will come to you. So even if you made a lot of mistakes in your life, the calling that He's entrusted to you, so even if he entrusted one person to you, two people, five people, it doesn't matter how many people you are entrusted with, but you have to eagerly, willingly you know, serve them, then what kind of reward will come to you? The crown of glory. So it says, you know, the, one, the, the crown of glory that is imperishable and does not rot away. Because your, if the, your life and the fruits will be a proof to it. So everything your life will be a witness of everything. So it's not like you pretend. That's not how the crown is given to you. It's all related to your life. So the crown of life, the crown of righteousness, and the crown of glory. So these are the crowns. And then we're going to talk about rewards. So even re there's a lot of rewards in bi the Bible. Because there's a lot of variety. So we're just going to do Matthew chapter 10. Verse 40 to 42. Matthew 10, verse 40 to 42. He who receives you receives me, and he who receives me receives him who sent me. He who receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward, and he who receives a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. And whoever gives one of these little ones only a cup of cold water in the name of a disciple, assuredly I say to you, he shall by no means lose his reward. So how can you receive the reward? There's three kinds of rewards, the major three. So the way to receive the reward is very simple. You receive them, you accept them, and you honor them. So think of the one who sent you, if you receive them, it's the same as receiving the one who sent them, so then he will give you the reward. So when God's Father God sent Jesus, his son, and then when you accept Jesus, who do you receive? You're also accepting God. So you receive the one who sent him when you receive him. So then, if you treat the one who was sent to you as a prophet and you honor him as a prophet, then you'll receive the prophet's reward when a prophet comes to you. So Matt Soger, his prophet's reward, when you prophesy and it's fulfilled in your life, that is the prophet's reward. So someone who couldn't give birth to a child, you know, giving birth to a child, that's the reward. Or for like three years, six months, you know, there's going to be famine and then you prophesy that you're not going to starve and then they don't starve and you know all of that is fulfilling and it's the prophet's reward so it's not doing much things but it's just your heart's attitude if your heart's attitude is humble you honor and accept and receive them isn't it easy it's not saying you be a prophet if someone sent if he sent you someone as a prophet to you you accept them and honor them as a prophet then you'll receive the prophet's reward but with your heart even if you give them a cup of cold water, what does God treat that as? He counts it as you receive the prophet and he's going to give you the prophet's reward. That's why I say it to you guys a lot. It's good to work for the church, but based on what kind of motive, what kind of heart you give, it determines if that reward will be given to you or not. That's why I said multiple times. Many people, you know, do work. You work for a church, you do serve the work, but you do it with a different motive. That's why the reward isn't coming. You have the imperishable crown. That's why there's division and arguments. If you have the imperishable crown, uh, wait, that's perishable crown, sorry. Okay. And then the second one, the crown of righteousness. Who gets the crown of righteousness? So it only says crown of righteousness in one place, but if you read the Bible, it's very interesting. In Matthew chapter 25, you know, it talks about the sheep and goats. One is the right and one is the left side. So when you talk about the sheep, it says the sheep is addressed as the righteous. 
So as the sheep, those who serve God as a sheep, you know, even the little one, you think of God and you serve them. So even if you said, they said, oh yeah, you helped me, but you said, oh, I didn't do anything. I just did what I had to do. Those people are righteous. So those who live like a sheep will receive the righteous reward. But those who live like a goat, will you receive the perishable or the imperishable? You're going to get the perishable because you already received it at that time. So when you serve others, make it not be known. But sometimes you want to show off, show it off, and you want to let people know that that's the, it. You already got your reward. If you just stay still, then you'll get the righteous reward. But because you already told and you showed off, so it's already finished. So you have to understand the Bible principle. What's the important? So whether you receive the reward or not, it's based on your heart. What kind of heart attitude you'll have, so that's the important thing. So what is the disciples reward? So if you look in the Bible, this is the parable of the talent or all those parables when they entrusted something to the disciples and then they came back after a certain time and when you examine it, so based on how they lived, it can be 30 times, 60 times, 100 times or a double of what they did. So it's not based on how much you, you know, more you got or not. It's about how much you obeyed the owner's words. That's, so that's the disciples' reward. It's based on how much you obeyed his word. So giving the kingdom as the reward is the disciples' report. So the disciples, if you live as a disciple, you have to go and make disciples. And then you have to love one another. So that's something you'll do. That's the new commandment. So when you do all those things, then you will know that you are his disciples. And if, you're, if you abide in me and I abide in you and he will hear you, he will be glorified and you will be his disciples. So those who by faith, you will receive the disciples reward. So it's very simple. So when you look at this closely, God wants everyone to listen to his words and obey it accordingly. He wants to give the reward to all of them. He wants to give you the reward. He wants to give his heart to you. He wants to bless you. So what's more important, if you receive it once, it's an imperishable crown that goes for eternally. But if there's a problem, is that you with your life, you, you don't have a goal in your life. And when you're in your teens, you're trying to think about what I want to do in my future. You think about it, but it's very vague. It's not clear. So because of that, the reward isn't given to you and you cannot go to the next level of wisdom, revelation, power, and authority that it's not being released to you because you don't have a clear goal, so especially Gen Z. So all of your future, have a dream and start asking the Father, what is his purpose for you? You were fearfully, wonderfully made according to his purpose and you were created for the good works, that's what the Bible says. But basically, what kind of works do you have to do because you don't ask him? That's why in the race, in your life, you don't have a clear goal, clear finish line. That's why you waver. So the first thing you have to examine is my decisions for it perishable or imperishable. Is the decision, the choices I make, is it certain or is it uncertain? So based on that choice, when you decide in your life, so there's going to be a great um, crown and rewards that God wants to give to you. It's going to overflow in your life, so I bless you guys. So everyone who's listening to this broadcast, I challenge you. Don't compare your life to those who live in this world. God wants to work together with you. So the life of his calling, the calling that he's called you into, I hope you guys live your life according to that. So that's the best thing for you. That'll give you joy and that'll give you satisfaction. Why? Because God created you and sent you into this world, this time, this generation, and through that so that you can fulfill, build up his kingdom with him together. So that's why great power and rewards he wants to give to you. So love God.
and seek him. Ask him. You then you have a clear direction and certain goal for your life. So I bless you in his name. Thank you.